welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we will take a look at getting our very first blinky running on the fpga mezzanine now i'll go through all the steps of setting up the hardware what all hardware you want and what all uh, how to set it up how to power everything on plus um the software end of things which we'll uh, take a look at in a second so here we have a dragon board 410c you can use just about any 96 board ce edition board um and you have your fpga mezzanine here uh, and that's how it looks from the back uh, and that's the max 10 uh, fpga and this is a jtag uh, usb blaster so this particular one is a clone uh, and it's okay to use a clone as long as you're using it to flash the fpga because that's all I have tested with a clone. Uh, as far as actual JTAG debugging is uh, goes, I am not entirely sure if a clone would work. Some clones might, some won't. So it's a better bet to get a proper FP, uh, proper Altera uh, JTAG debugger or USB blaster, uh, which is a bit more expensive. You can get these the clones pretty cheap. But anyway, we are going to use the clone because we are just going to flash. This is how one end looks and that goes into the Max 10 FPGA. Um, and in order to power on the FPGA properly, you are uh, required to plug it onto the uh, onto a 96 volt CE board. And um, the reason is, it, although it has uh, a 5 volt supply from the JTAG debugger, which it then converts to 3.3 volts for other peripherals uh, the 1.8 volt uh, power supply comes directly from your uh, 96 volt CE uh, board with it may be dragon board or whatever uh, the pinout remains the same so once you plug it in that's the only way to get the FPGA to boot up otherwise it will do nothing so with that done you need to connect a USB micro B to your um, computer uh, and power this on with a USB uh, with a 12 volt power adapter and um, it will be ready to go so let's move on to the software side of things and see how we can flash our FPGA all right now on to downloading the software we need quarters prime light and we are going to use 18.1 you can pretty much use whatever uh, version you want but latest is always better i don't and I, I don't think the instructions would change too much so uh, i'll be doing all the demonstration on fedora 29 which is a linux distribution everything can be replicated on uh, a windows machine with minimal change first thing you need is the light edition which is more than enough uh, so you just go ahead and download the tar file which is around 6.2 gigabytes in size yes it is actually that big and what you go ahead and do is open where you downloaded it and you can see i have already done that and extract it so in fedora it's right click and just extract here and it will extract that for you right there and you can see there's a readme uh, setup.sh and components.s all you need to do is um, run setup.sh uh, on a terminal so i'll open uh, my terminal emulator uh, uh, navigate to where I downloaded it and then where I extracted it and all I have to do is dot slash setup dot sh press enter and it will begin so a very simple click next and accept license agreement of course there's a free version you can see it shows where you want to install it you can change the folder uh, to your will um, so up till uh, just select everything uh, to save some space you can uh, uncheck all of the other FPGAs and just have the max 10 installed this will save you quite a bit of space on your hard drive if you are concerned about that otherwise just let all the default setting be and that would be just fine after that again press next and it will start to install now i have already installed everything so i'm not going to go through that process again as soon as i click next it will start to install so i am going to cancel that 
and abort because everything is already installed as I said so we need to open our terminal emulator again and now this time direct it to where you have installed your um, program so that's Intel FPGA Lite and then 18.1 and here you can see you have your quartz folder as well cd into that and then cd into the bin folder which will again have a lot of executable files now all you need to do is first of all before running in some um, linux based systems there's an issue where the jtag debugger doesn't get detected sometimes it's solved with a simple udev rule which i'll again link in the main documentation below but um for me it's uh, it's been kind of an issue but the easier solution is to run the jtag d daemon as a root user so just use sudo dot slash and then jtag d and once that is running in the background um that that should solve your jtag issues so let's cd into a home folder and from here we'll run the quarter software so dot slash uh, altera and where you have installed your quarter software 18.1 quarters bin and then quarters now if you're running on a 64-bit system it's uh, it's recommended to use the 64-bit uh, flag there uh, and that will run quarters in a 64-bit mode so this is how it looks like you can see i have a few projects open already but we'll not take a look at that we'll start with the very basic we'll start with creating a new project so let's go into file select the new project wizard and this shows us uh, everything we need right there what is the name of the project uh, we'll just say uh, blinky and just keep that name in mind and where it will actually be saved so press next create an empty project that's fine um no need to add files right now now here we have to be careful and select uh, the proper fpga chip so the exact chip that is on our fpga machine is the 10m04 da f256 c8 g and you need to keep this particular one in mind anything else will not work so make sure that is selected and click next and here you can just continue uh, clicking next we don't really need to set everything up and then click finish and it will quickly start to set up your project might take a while uh, might not it all depends all right so we have our project all created now let's go ahead and go into the file structure and you can see we don't have any files right now we need to go ahead uh, create a new file uh, and select verilog hdl file or vhdl i'll be using verilog for this particular example uh, click ok and you can see that appears right there go ahead into um, save as and save that and that automatically gets added to your project right there uh, and it's also named blinky.va so this is kind of your main file uh, like in a c program but for very long so now you need to start writing your main module so that would be module and it needs to be named the same as the main file in this case is blinky and then we can start with other things make sure to close that up and also add n module at the end all right so our basic module is ready so we have a module named blinky it has an input clock and an output led uh, we have a register called LED register which is assigned to the output LED and then uh, we have an always uh, we have a second uh, slow clock register which acts as a divider clock thing and I've uh, taken the register size from approximation it's not calculated 
so for every time um, one clock cycle passes from a main clock which is a 50 megahertz clock uh, it increments the value of our slow clock and each uh, for as long as uh, slow clock last register is uh, high it will um, create a positive edge and then flip the value of the led uh, in our case creating a blinky effect that we can actually see so uh, let's control s to save it um, go ahead and run the analysis and synthesis uh, right click and press start it will take a few seconds could take a minute or two and uh, depending upon your system and once that passes we can go ahead into pin configuration all right so our analysis and synthesis seem to be uh, done uh, and I did make a small change right here uh, instead of LED I had to add LED register uh, because we are not directly toggling the output LED pin itself so once that is done we can go into assignments select pin planner and wait for that to open up so you can see we already have our clock in and LED output here now we need to select what location that is and that is where the schematics come in uh, so you can download the schematics links will be in the description of this video so um, let's go and open up the schematics that we have right there and this is on page number eight of the schematics we have our 50 megahertz clock generator you can see 50 m uh, and that is labeled as clock in and that is going into pin l3 so all we have to do go into the location and add l3 and it will all automatically select which bank and which exact pin, uh, pin there is uh, we leave the io standard as default uh, and then for output uh, we need to go a bit more further down and where we can see our leds which are right there and um, so this is debug led one two three and four and we can use either one of them so we just select this control c control f and control v and search where they are um, and here it is on page number six we have our debug led one two three and four and they are on l8 m6 m7 and m8 so let's go with debug led one which is on pin l8 uh, let's go ahead and make sure that is set to pin l8 now if you want to check your pin out uh, and make sure that there's no issue you have a live io check here which you can run very quickly and that will make sure that all your pinouts are fine and live I will check passed and that's it uh, you can close that and then go ahead and run compile design this this will take a few more minutes um, as everything gets tested again So that's done the compilation is finished now let's go ahead and finally um, flash it so what you need to do is first go ahead and power on your FPGA and the 96 volt CE uh, board that it's connected to so plug it in and make sure it powers on nicely and once it's powered on what you can do is connect your JTAG debugger uh, or USB blaster whatever you want to call that into your host system and you shouldn't get any crazy notification like something has attached or anything but you should get uh, a message on the uh, D message output and select a programmer from right there uh, click on that it will open up and in hardware setup it should show USB blaster uh, here like it is showing right now and there should be a 
light on your usb blaster as well and now simply just go ahead and select start and that should start to flash fpga and that happened pretty quickly and this is how it looks like so you can see it's blinking pretty fast this is the led one and that's about it that's how it works make sure to take a look at the documentation in the description that will have all the links to all the parts or uh, downloads that are necessary and that's about it for this one